Okay. And we are starting formally the today section, the today session, WebEx session for data 650 course overview and just get us started. The today agenda is to have um, um, introduction to the course material, what to expect and to give you opportunity to ask questions in the beginning. So we start with clear idea. Uh, the way we are going to do this type of, uh, let's say, synchronous sec section, which is not usual for for UMUC, but for this program, we've been doing this. Um, we are going to get together. There are three sections of Data 650 with three instructors, myself, Elena Gorcheva, Professor Patrick Kasmir, and Professor Gopati. In addition, we have two TA, which is Elena Baitenskaya and Linish Dave. So uh, how the course will be structured? I will be teaching the first six weeks of the courses and the second half of the courses, data uh, section 94 and 41 is Professor Patrick Kasmir and Professor 9042 is Professor Gopati. So Elena and Dave will, uh, and Linish will share responsibility for these three sections and will make sure your question are answered within a 24 hour. Uh, we are talking about the TA mostly are going to answer your question related with the software in the class. So they will try to answer in within 24 hour any question you may have. So we are going to talk about um, about uh, the issue uh, related with uh, the course content, grading, some miscellaneous uh, question, first week activity, and of course answer any question you may have. Uh, starting with what to expect of this class. As I, uh, I already see just reading your introduction, still uh, we have a reflection in the class what is outside about what to expect about when we talk about big data. Um, you have been exposed to this term for, uh, for at least for the duration of the program. And you very well know that the term is uh, used in many different direction and I would say sometimes not well used and sometimes even abused. I have been the hype for many years just because it has been a lot of hype with, with big data and the expectation of industry were not fearful. Today we are in the stage where big data is already not anymore in the hype. If you look to the link I posted in the classroom, uh, you will see that already big data is not in the, this hype cycle um, of Gartner report, and uh, you must understand why. This is because already the expectation of, of big data is already fearful. So now in the hype are new terms which are just to, uh, to replay, uh, this, this is just the continuation of big data. This is what is machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning. Those are the new term and they are very strongly related with big data because for, for instance, just to take one of them, we are going to talk about this along the whole course. Uh, machine learning, is on the hype right now, even though machine learning exists for many years. Why is in the hype right now? Because with the amount of data, actually machine learning algorithm can perform uh, in the way they are taught about. You have to do a training and in order to have a reliable model with good performance, you need a, a good amount of data for training and, the, and after that for testing. So they are strongly related what is big data, machine learning, deep learning, and now the new hype, hype artificial intelligence, not in the broad term, 
but in more applic application terms. So we are going to talk about all these things in this class because big data is strongly related with them. With them. In the first two weeks, uh, we have a discussion topic in the classroom in which I would expect uh, everyone post his opinion. There are many, uh, let's say, sub-question in the topic. That is not like a question you have to respond. This is just a guidance where to guide the discussion. And the my main idea is to get better understanding about big data in broad sense. In broad sense, this is not just about data because what we actually, one of the definition I have here, if this can be say is definition because it's not like formal definition, is that when the data grow by beyond the possibility to be captured with the existing technology, to be shared, to be visualized, to be analyzed with the existing technology, we start talking about already big data and we need new technology. The first thing is to go, go out of, of your personal computer. As you know, when you have to analyze huge amount of data, you cannot do this in a personal computer. So the first very simple definition, which is not formal, is when the data grow beyond the size of your personal computer, we are talking about big data. Well, this is not exactly, we can accept this is very simplified way of do, to, uh, to talk about. The most broad way to understand this is that when data start to be beyond the existing tool which can deal with the data, we start talking about big data. That, let's say, 10 years ago, when Yahoo was not able to deal with the email, and uh, Facebook has a huge amount of data to deal with, uh, the technology um, give, uh, let's say, uh, the, the solution was Hadoop. 10 years ago, Hadoop was um, a Hadoop distributed file system and the system on top with MapReduce was the solution to start dealing with huge amount of data. When they are new bottleneck with the speed of data, with uh, new tools have appeared like uh, in memory analytic tool um, and after that Spark, all these new technology are exactly in line with this definition. When the existing technology cannot deal um, with the data in the way we want to search the data, in the way we want to analyze the data, in the way we want to share the data, new technology appear and we start to be able to deal. And this is constant progression. Nothing is, um, let's say, nothing is um, static. So all this way to look to what is big data is telling us that every time we get to this new stage, we need new data architecture and we need new tools. So having this as a pre-introduction to what is big data, although we are going to talk about this, you understand that we will be talking in this class a lot about tools. Why? Because in order to solve the problem with big data, any practical program, problem, you, you will need a tool which is able to deal with this type of data. So this is one of the important things to keep in mind to better understand the, uh, let's say, the topics in, in the course and then the specific assignment and what to expect of the course. So regarding the volume, this is one very nice uh, graphical re uh, representation. You've been exposed to this. I would say the most important key characteristic of big data is not just the volume. The volume is the first one which we started 10, 15 years ago, but now the 
other important characteristic which drive the technology and the analytical power to extract insights for this data. Because until this data has some insight for the company, has value for the company because can give advantage in the competition on in selling product, on in designing new service and in providing service until then, data doesn't have any value. So value is the most important characteristic. And in order to have value, we have to keep in mind that the issue is not just the volume, the issue is the speed of the data. I mean, the speed of the data uh, in which the data is produced, in which the data is analyzed, in which the result, the analytical results okay. are available. Uh, so, we have to keep in mind that, uh, it, uh, hello, I will have to put people in, um, everyone please in mute because we cannot, okay. Okay, I think now I put everyone, unfortunately, I don't want to put automatically everyone in mute, I have this option. Uh, now I'm just interrupting to, to put people in mute because at, at the end I will give you opportunity one by one if you have question and you don't want to write, you want to communicate, you have this option. But if the rule is not respected, unfortunately I will have to use the feature to put everyone in mute. So please respect this rule and only talking when really needed. So the point was the other characteristic of big data, not just the volume, was the speed and most importantly, the veracity. The veracity, variety of the data and the value. So all this complexity of big data is the big picture. So keep in mind up to here, my main point, big data is not just volume, it's not just Hadoop. That's our two key points in order to continue. And why it's important to continue this way? You, uh, you, can, um, you can understand the way we are moving in this course. Since the picture is so complex about big data and the course is big data analytics, which if you translate all the words one after the other, that means that we are going to concentrate in what is analytics for big data. So continuing in the complexity of what is big data and what we are going to understand, this is very nice a graphical presentation of the evolution uh, and how the different tools were uh, appeared in order to solve a problem for different application, for instance, uh, Hadoop appeared when uh, and NoSQL to solve problem for Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, so on and on and on. We have to be aware about this and we need to know uh, the, the type of data as a data analyst, you need to be aware what type of data you will be wo working with. Um, this is one very nice graphical presentation of the type of data. And as you can see, the data we are accustomed to think about, which is organized in table, column and row, is just the top part of this pyramid and it's just 20% which is the structured data. The wealth of data we are talking about and we will be focusing in this course, we will try to embrace all the data, all this variation in the pyramid. So usually we are talking all structured data is 80%. This is like to say everything is black and white and just real life is not black and white. We have the tonality and we have the gray color so that's why this is very important. We have in the bottom, which is really what is really unstructured data. And we have different variation of unstructured data, like a 
semi-structured and quasi-structured. Why is important? Because understanding your data as a data analyst, what is the type of, type of data, you will be able to choose the method and the tools to obtain analytical result for this data. So when we talk about totally unstructured data, we are talking about text, images, and they are usually in PDF format, in video, so on and on. This are, is the bottom of the pyramid. Totally unstructured data, free text, the text you read in the textbook, the text, uh, the YouTube video, and images taken from uh, different places. Now, there are other options which we should be treating with different approaches, analytical approaches and tools, which are the quasi-structured data, for, uh, for instance. Uh, web click stream data is, um, let's say, there, are some, they, uh, there is some format we can think about. It's not totally unstructured data. There is a format of this click stream, and we can extract with, let's say, different tool, let's say not so complicated, like to deal with totally unstructured data, like natural language, clickstream can be processed, uh, let's say, relatively easier compared with totally unstructured data. So that's why it's important we have them in different category. Also, in addition, the same structured data, which are the HTML uh, data file, which have self-description, for any web page. So when we have to deal with this type, a type of da data, even though they are textual data, but they still have some pattern, some structure, we have them in, in, um, in different category. Uh, my suggestion is the following. After we finish today, I will be posting the recording of this session and I will be posting the, the PowerPoint presentation. So every time, you need to think about this stuff, go back and look again and reflect, and you can ask questions, you can discuss with your colleague, you can ask questions with the instructor, with the TA, whatever is appropriate. The thing is you get handle on this. Again, we have people. Okay, I think next time I will be putting everyone on mute. So here is example about the different data type we have um, in the pyramid, uh, the typical structured data in table, the semi-structured data we have here at XML, the quasi-structured data, and totally unstructured data, which is YouTube video. Every time you think about example, think about where your data you are going to work in your assignment, in your project for, and then think about what are the most appropriate methods and tools to deal with them. So here I have something which I very would like to, uh, to discuss in the discussion for, uh, for this week. The link, you can see it. I'm going to open and share the link with you. I don't have it here. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see if I can share the other one. I cannot open from here. I didn't open. It's not going to work. Okay. Let's see. Here it is. Um, when you open this link, you will see and reflect to this diagram which is regarding a term which has appeared a couple of years ago, which is in parallel, which is the evolution of what is big data and is the term of smart data. This is Simmons' interpretation about what is smart data. And I would like that you do some research, reflect this diagram, and most importantly, what I very would like that you reflect is on the example at the end, because this diagram up to here, up to the example, is totally generic, 
and you can apply for different examples. So try to understand this example of smart data, what Siemens means, and try to produce different example uh, of in our class discussion, which we are having over these two weeks, and reflect on what you understand. Just try to put your uh, to discuss your point with a different example similar to this one, which is to optimize gas turba uh, turbine. So that is one of the tasks I want to see in the first week. The link is here in the presentation, and I will be posting the link again uh, separately in, after we finish. So this is just brief introduction what to expect in this course related with what we understand by big data as you understand the the topic is very the topic is very ample we cannot study everything important in this in a single course and we have picked up the most important topic related with uh, the analytics for big data. Think about that the, the three word title of the course. If you interpret this, we are going to focus how to analyze big data, analytics for big data. So that is the main. And the course is going to be just for you opening the door to the analytics for big data. After this course, you will have this door open to go more in deep, you are going to be just, if this is a stair, when I open the door to enter to a house, you still are not going to be to the second floor of the house. You still will be in the living room. Uh, you have explored the kitchen and the dining room of the, of the home, if this can be some parallel. After that, exploring more is going to be after this class on your oven, on your professional career or even in the last course, which is a capstone project. So uh, this course, like all the courses in the data analytic program, are developed in what is a format named competence base. What that means? That means that we go beyond the uh, traditional course which usually what we do in traditional course, we provide you with material, you le read, you learn, you interact, you add question, and at the end, we ex there is an exam. You have to pass the exam to show what you have learned. Here we go step forward. You have to learn, but the next step is you can apply what you have learned. So all the assessment, all the assignment is after you have learned it, you have to apply what you have learned it in a real example of data and solve some real problem in data analytics. Of course, the projects are not very extensive, are small projects possible to deal in a couple of weeks. And we have four main major topic in the course. We are going to do with the main um, issue of unstructured data starting with text. We are going to do text analysis. We are going to go to what is natural language processing. Some of the assignments are individual. Natural language processing and cognitive computing we are going to do as a class, not individually. And then we are going to do a very important topic in big data analytics is in memory analytic. Uh, we are going to use the techniques of many in memory analytic to do sentimental analysis, which is one hot topic in data analytic today, applied almost in any industry. Then we are going to do application to data management on Hadoop. Uh, using one of the tools uh, in the Hadoop ecosystem, which is HBase, and then we are going to do machine learning with Spark. So in this class, we are not going to learn, let's say, new algorithm. You, you lose, use, uh, in previous two classes, you learned the, the main data mining and predictive analytic algorithm. So in this class, we are going to apply the, the same algorithm, 
with different approach and techniques to deal with big data. That is going to be the difference um, in this class. So the assignment as uh, the competence-based model is, is going to be approach in which you apply what you have learned. And in order to apply, in addition to, uh, to reading and learning, you will have to use some tool and we will help you. They are, uh, for each assignment, will be different tool because that is what industry requires today from data analysts and data scientists. It's not just, you know, are and you already graduated and you are data analyst, data scientist. So since this program was developed with the input from industry, we have also advisory board for a company like Bulls Allen, um, Lockheed Martin, US government executive branch, IBM, just to name few of them. The input from industry for data analyst, data scientists, if you read also any job description, requires at least three, four tools. We are not saying you are going to learn this tool in deep, you are going to be expert, but you will be exposed sufficiently to have enough grasp on the tool to show that you can do some type of analysis appropriate with this type of big data and using this type of tool. And then this is like open door, you can go more in deep on your own as much as you want. So given this approach, we already are having very good results for the program. The program was already awarded several important um, awards from uh, national, um, let, uh, for national organization like the University Professional Continuum Education Association of the Mid-Atlantic. The program was awarded uh, as an outstanding program previous year and also we got the award for the partnership award, the partnership we have with IBM exchanging and using different tools with them which make uh, our classes more hands-on. Also, we were awarded the National University Technology Network uh, for Innovation Award. And this last year, a team of three students, they were students in Data 650, and at that point in Data 650, they did a group project with the two of who all of you should have already use it in data 610, which is Watson analytic, business analytic tool. So this team, team of three students, Tracy, Elizabeth, and Abel, they, present, they prepared a project with Watson analytic in the global world, global competition, and they uh, won the second place in this global competition. The global competition was for the whole world, for all Europe, Asia, uh, Un United States, Canada, uh, Latin America, um, so uh, you name it, and they were ranked, uh, they were 210 team presenting for this competition, and the team of data analytics, the, these three students for Data 650 won second place. That was amazing achievement. And moreover, they were invited to present their project in the, uh, in the realm of uh, when they were awarded this, um, uh, uh, this um, award. They went to Malaysia. So think about, and we have many open doors to do many different things. I will appreciate everyone in mute so we can conduct this meeting in the way it is supposed to be. Thank you. So uh, I would appreciate, uh, don't, I don't um, have to interrupt this presentation and we have a rewarding, um, we use the time wisely. Please everyone in mute. Uh, he, uh, so for the, uh, I would hardly suggest everyone review the syllabus. Here I have extract of the uh, syllabus um, schedule 
just I have added in different way uh, because the syllabus has to be in the way which the two work. Here I have added, added this uh, last column for more clarity. And as you can see, almost every second week, every second week we do have this type of um, WebEx to walk you through new tool, new tool which you will have to use to do your assignment. So the way we are going to help you to gra get grasp at least to four or five different tools for big data analysis, which is the key of big data analysis, is to have this walkthrough and the help of the TA. So my suggestion is, as always, use the time wisely, start assignment on time, and ask questions as soon as pos possible. Projects are designed uh, this way, that they cannot be done on Saturday, on Sunday, before the assignment is due. They have duration, different duration, three or two or four weeks, it depends, of the assignment. And you should start reading and exploring immediately and allotting the necessary time for this six credit intense course so you can get all benefits, not just to pass the course with passing grade, but to get the maximum of what we are offering. So uh, you know that the, the minimum required time for six credit intense cre uh, course is 15, 20 hours a week, and it doesn't work. Many of you think, oh, I can do it this on Sunday. It doesn't work this way. You have to work a lot of the time, even late in the night. If you can allot one or two hours, that is okay. But you have to work constantly, not just one day of the week. Oh, um, so uh, this is from organizational purposes. Here I'm going to go to the way we are going to use the different tool. And I have presented the evolution, uh, why we are moving from what is the spreadsheets, which is, we are not using this anymore in data analytics. This is a tool which had very uh, uh, immense value some time ago, but for um, analytical purposes today, and moreover in big data, you cannot do with Excel spreadsheets, uh, big data analysis. Also, the data warring houses like a very valuable analytical tool for many, many years. We are running away from them. They still are alive, but today need of data analytics, you cannot afford to put the request to information technology department for a data warring house and to wait the deployment for six weeks and there is a schema already built in, and this is the report you can gain from this. Uh, data warring houses, as the name, is for reporting purposes. If you want to do the today tendency of data analytics and the power of big data, you have to go to predictive analytics, and you have to give results as soon as possible, and everything is um, flexible. So we are moving from the left to the right to what is the analytic sandbox in which the data analyst, data scientists will find uh, all available tools and will have to select the most, the most appropriate for the type of problem he wants to solve and from the type of data he wants. And usually, this analytic sandbox is in the cloud. Um, I really like this graphical representation uh, about the big data approach today, which is different from the uh, traditional analytical approach. When a user will request for the IT department deployment of uh, database or data warring houses, and then wait for six months to be deployed by the IT department and then run a report. With big data, this scheme is the traditional one. It doesn't work. 
we still run today. This is still a viable option, but it's the available option for what is customer survey and to run reports. For big data analytic, predictive analytic, we go to the new approach of big data. What is the new approach? The IT department somehow delivers a platform with all available software and services, and then the data analysts pick up like from the table where all the plates are there, the most appropriate to answer the question for the problem he wants to solve. So you see totally different approach. And this totally different approach has moved more forward to the cloud. Why to the cloud? You, hear, uh, you are hearing cloud everywhere. And um, to the cloud, just because cloud has proven in the last five years to be very convenient for any businesses. Uh, businesses, instead to spend time with big IT department and to have infrastructure built to maintain this infrastructure, update software, uh, technical support, maintenance, and moreover, these server are used as the project and the tasks are given. In the cloud is, let's say, cheaper and most effective. Why? Because starting in the cloud, you can use the service, elastic service, and you play, pay only for what you are using. You don't have a server sitting there. It doesn't matter. You are using it or you don't use it. Moreover, you contract the service. You don't have, as a company I'm talking about, I'm not talking about in personal, uh, as a person, as a data analyst. I'm talking about uh, the company you will be working or you already are working, which already has moved big portion of the software or even the infrastructure to the cloud. So company try to save resources and to be more effective in what is their expertise. If they are expert, for instance, in kind of in banking service, why they have to care too much about IT, cloud, uh, software maintenance, they can just contract the service. And that is where everyone is using, using software as a service, platform as a service, and that is what we are going to do in this class. So you are be, will be trained not only to use tools for big data analysis, you will be using them in the cloud. The cloud, we, the platform we are going to use is a Bluemix, which is the IBM cloud. And maybe you will ask why IBM and not AWS, which is the top one in cloud service. Well, I, AWS is the top in cloud. IBM is the fourth. It's not the first, not the second, not the third. But we are looking here for analytical power. So number one in analytical product are IBM and SaaS. So we are going with the cloud of IBM, combining good cloud services with powerful analytical tools, which are the open source Hadoop and Spark on Bluemix, and very important in memory analytical tool, which is the columnar databases, which are the NoSQL DashDB, and HBase on top of Hadoop. So all this is provided in Bluemix in addition to what is Watson Cognitive, not Watson Analytic you were using in Data 610, is Watson Cognitive, which is, um, uh, let's say, the artificial intelligence, the new paradigm of cognitive computing, and we are going to explore this as a class in week three, four, and five. So just to share and show you is very important in this first week you um let me share the bluemix screen here is my bluemix here is very important that you follow the instruction which are in the classroom sign up 
the signing up for Bluemix and obtaining six months service is two step pro, uh, process. First, you sign up for the trial 30 day free. Make sure you sign for this one, trial 30 day free. So after you sign up right here, you view, view appear that you have 29 day available. After that, you sign up in the academic initiative of IBM, which is on the hub. You sign with your, uh, everywhere you sign with your student email at, uh, at student.umuc.edu. So this way um, you prove you are student because this access is given for free only for academia. Let me tell you, the cloud you see here if you scroll down, you will see they are more than 100 different services. Of course, and, and this is the same uh, industry cloud which IBM charge company, and this is expensive service. So we are getting this for free in order to get it for free. After the 30 day free, you have to sign up uh, for the code, for the six month code, and then you add the, it here, apply promo code. Never ever add a credit card. If you happen to add the credit card, you will be charged. This is unavoidable because all the services we are going to use are expensive. We are going to use them for free. You will have access for six months from academic point of view. So make sure you follow strictly the instruction which are in the classroom. Never ever enter a, a credit card and follow the instruction, two-step instruction, always with your student email. If you have any question, don't hesitate to post it in the classroom and uh, anyone of the TA is going to help you with this process. So if you look to Bluemix, uh, there are many, many services. Don't get intimidated by this. We are going to work only in this class in only two categories with some of the services. The services we are going to work is Apache Spark, Apache Hadoop, these are the open source. We are going to work with in memory analytic, which is the dash DB in the cloud, which is the, actually this is the, the analytical one, uh, the analytic one, not this one. One is SQL database and this is the analytical in memory analytic. This is what we are going to use from here. And the high H base is in the big XI Apache Hadoop because this is the platform. In addition, nothing else. Of course, you are free to explore whatever you want. Just keep in mind, like an academic, um, academic uh, user, you are allowed to have open simultaneously no more than 10 services. In order to add another service, you have to delete one but maximum 10 services open it. So for, for, the, for any assignment, you don't need more than two. So for the class, we are all well set. Of course, you understand we have access to the industry standard which IBM charge any company. They are, they should be some restrictions. So this is the restriction. No more than 10 services open simultaneously. Actually, you don't need this. If you will have to explore something in addition, you wish, you just delete one of the services and open new one. So then we are going to explore some of the services in the Vatsun Cognitive in, in, um, in week three and uh, three, four and five. So if there are any questions with this, I can come here later. Let me finish the presentation. Um, uh, this is just a uh, graphical presentation of what is Watson Cognitive, not the Watson Analytic you had in data uh, 610. Watson Cognitive is part of what is the 
artificial intelligence, which today is not the classical, traditional, general artificial intelligence. This is more application oriented. That's why uh, IBM is branding this as a cognitive and is using the general artificial intelligence algorithm together with machine learning algorithm to do, which is something very close to the way we as a human sense predict and infer answer to certain in the same way we human do. So that's why, and this we are going to explore, uh, to explore in Bloomix 2 uh, as a class. So I think um, you are going to get motivated with this. This is part of the syllabus. I just posting this here uh, to remind you, very important. Make sure you understand what is the gra grading for this class so you don't get surprised at the end. Each assignment has a weight and the discussion, even not very high weight, but each discussion, there are five discussion in the class, each one is two points. Don't miss them because this makes the difference between A and B. And moreover, the discussion are very important to grasp better understanding of the material. They are part of the course design and they have shown they are very helpful to understand this complex topic, which is the analytic for big data. So assignment one is on text analysis. Assignment two, again, is in sentimental analysis using in-memory analytic. Three, we are going to use uh, to explore what is uh, Hadoop ecosystem and using one of the many tools which are there to manage data, which is going to be age based. And the last assignment is the hot, hot tool today in data analysis, which is Spark, which overperform Hadoop. And this is where everyone is moving, and you will be doing machine learning with Spark. The grading is the same grading like in all the data analytic classes. And um, uh, just uh, read the syllabus, what is expected as an average work for B, and in order to get A, how you have to go above and beyond everything. So uh, again, don't miss uh, to review frequently the announcement in the classroom, the discussion topic, and very important, the question you may have uh, for each uh, assignment, we, we, we will have Q and A section. Post your question there. Why? Because this is the best way to handle this in an online environment. First, question uh, related with programming and assignment are relevant usually to everyone, not individual, and everyone will benefit. Moreover, some of your colleagues, maybe they were not able to formulate the question. This will help them. And uh, instructor TA will answer the same question no, once, not 30, 30 times. And the response question, the, the response time is always less than uh, the, the, than uh, uh, 24 hours for time to time. Someone is traveling, but you always will get your answer within 24 hours. Now, uh, I know many, some of you are very tempted to uh, send email to faculty to TA. Nothing wrong with this. This is okay. Just Keep the email for something which is more personal, is not related with the assignment, then it has to be in the email. But if it is related with the material, with the assignment, I very encourage you to do the way it works better in online class. Post it in the classroom and everyone will benefit. So now we are to what is the question and answer. And um, I don't know if you posted your question in the chat. I will suggest that you post them there. And, 
and I will start answering or before, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the most important part. Before going to question and answer, I want um, the, um, the instructor uh, for all the section on the TA just to present themselves with a few, uh, with few words. Sorry, I forget this to do in the beginning. This is just the distraction to have to mute some of, uh, some of you. So let's start with Patrick, are you still there? Patrick? No, I think he's not anymore. So Professor Patrick he, uh, lives actually in the Tampa area. He's without electricity right now. He connected with his cell phone. He was here, not watching the presentation. He was in the phone, but I think something went wrong and he is not anymore. He actually is going to teach week 7 to 12, section 9040 and 9041. So he is without electricity in Tampa. You understand this. So let's go with Professor Gop. Is, is you? Patrick, are you here? No, he's not. He's not anymore. So, uh, Gopati, can you say a few words for the student, please? Sure. Uh, Gopati, this is my uh, first uh, course at the UMUC. Uh, I have taught before at, uh, at different universities. Um, I am in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I am uh, currently working as a senior data scientist for a healthcare corporation. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I use a lot of these technologies in my work uh, every day. As uh, Elena mentioned, these are the cutting edge technologies that we use to uh, analyze uh, healthcare data, uh, structured and unstructured data and to build models um, to help the business deal with uh, uh, uncertainty uh, and reduce risk. So I'm very excited to uh, be part of this course. I hope to uh, run into each of you soon on the discussion forums. Uh, please don't uh, hesitate to uh, uh, email me um, or uh, start any discussion threads uh, with me. Thank you. Thank you. Elena? Elena? Yes, sir. I was on mute. Hello, everyone. So most of you may have met earlier in your 610 of 630 class. And I have been here in this program for a very, very long time, maybe almost the longest, almost the longest working TA probably and uh, I guess I look forward to work with you and with some of you again right I think some people may recognize my name here thank yeah. you Elena mm -hmm. um, Linish I think he's traveling and he was not able to connect from the hotel also he's in Texas he had some difficulty so uh, he he will be posting the other TA is Linish. So let me tell you, Linish and Elena, they are graduate for our programs. They have master degree. They know very well our programs, and you will get direct help with the software for graduate for our program. Very motivated people. They are professional, working full time and enjoying helping students so they work for us to help uh, you as a TA. So uh, since Linish is not here, he cannot present this. This will be posted in the classroom. Uh, in this class, we will have uh, something which is in addition to the curricula, uh, to the curricular um, assignment. We will have what is named uh, Kegel competition. The information will be posted this week in the class. You are encouraged, that's not of the assignment which are in the assignment folder. This is going to be extra three points if you opt to work in this competition. And the instruction and the guidance will be provided by Linish. So since he is not here, just hold on until Kegel competition instruction 
an account creation are posted in the classroom and the point of contact is going to be linear. Okay? So I'm start leading the question I see here in the chat and answering them in the order I see. Is there is a group project assignment in this class? No. There is no group project assignment in this class. They are four individual assignments. Let me go back to the assignment folder. Uh, here we are. They are four individual assignments. Actually, uh, the tutorial and assignment two, this is the same 25 points. Just we, um, we do this in two steps. You, you first do the tutorial. So ensure that you understand this mechanical step, which is step by step, do this, do the other, and then you proceed. The same with the Spark, you do the tutorial, and then you do the... They are four individual assignment and discussion as a class. So the class discussion are 10 points. This is mostly group, but as a class, not as a group of four or five students. Uh, Mike, I guess I answered it to your question, right? Yes? Okay. Uh, well, well, okay. So it looks that Wall didn't, uh, um, didn't learn Watson Analytic in Data 610 because you took the class long ago. You took the class before spring 20. 15, right? Can you unmute yourself so we can proceed faster? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So uh, let me think about if you want, uh, uh, let me tell you, the program, as I mentioned, is constantly updating. We are getting input from industry, okay? So Watson Analytics was introduced in Data 610 in spring 20. 15. So if you took the class before that, you didn't have Watson Analytics. We re with this purpose, we had a group project in Data 650 with Watson Analytic just to, to have exposed all the students because this is business analytic tool, Watson Analytic. It's not actually big data analytic tool. And the appropriate place is Data 610. But since we started, we wanted all student exposed to catch up. We had for most of the students in Data 650. This was already removed because the group, let's say, the people who are taking classes almost all semester, already 90% of you have been exposed to Watson Analytic. And we prefer to have in the big data analytic class what is actually the big data analytic. If you are interested in a decision to get exposed to the Watson analytic, I can think about this. Just contact me by email. And if someone else in the class hasn't been exposed to the Watson analytic, we can think about this. Okay? Okay, thank you. But let me tell you, you have to think very carefully because the course is really very intense. Well, like all the classes in Master of Science in Data Analytics, these are six credit intense course. If you skip two days or a week to catch up, it requires actually extra effort. So let's see what we can do to be exposed to Watson Analytic. Would, would that be yeah. possible? Yes, like yeah, go ahead. Professor Lina, can you hear me? Oh, this is Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Yeah. I'm still on the call, but you couldn't hear me, so I I drop off, and now I'm. I want to say hi to everyone. I'm listening to the call from my car. I don't have power, but I made the effort to join to say hi. I will teach the second part of the course. I'm a data scientist professionally. I work with building models, and I'm really I have expertise in everything you guys will learn on the second part, and I will help you with your homework, with anything, with data analytics and big data. So thanks, all of you, for attending. And I know it's 
I wish I could be on the WebEx, but I could not. I don't have internet, so I did an effort to join. And and the second part, I will do my best to provide you guys with all the knowledge, all the material, and the content to make this course a great journey. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Stay safe. Um, so did we finish with Watson Analytic or it was something else you wanted to say, Go. No? Okay. Then contact me by email. We proceed with the next question. The next question is about the competition. Uh, yes, it's 3% of the final grade. This will be extra on top because the grade book is, is set for 100%, do you see? It will end up 103 for those of you who um, participate in the contest and do at least, uh, uh, let's say, there is some level you have to pass in order to, um, you have to read the instruction and you will see, you have to get done something, you understand? You have to get some result. Did I answer? Okay. Okay, I see there is another. Brian, which he, uh, when you took data 610? Brian, can you mute yourself and talk, please? Mm -mm. Let's see where you are. I wonder if he just put in the job that he took it two years ago. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, well, if you are interested, I can tell you. This is evolvement. You cannot have everything. Let me tell you. Uh, we are constantly making changes in all the classes. For instance, in predictive analytics class, we have moved more machine learning there and we have uh, um, focused more in, uh, in support vector machine and an ensemble method. I mean, uh, the program is not static and we are constantly updating this. So uh, they always will be some differences. If you feel that you really need, uh, let me tell you, uh, we are doing uh, different WebEx for Data 610. So whoever didn't took Watson Analytic, let me and Elena know because we will have WebEx in Watson Analytic. She can enroll you in the account and you can do a work in addition and learn on your own pace. We can think about this. You will get an uh, account created for Watson Analytic and you will be able to work. This is another cloud. Okay. No, you don't need to know Watson Analytic as a pre This is just a tool, it's not a method. Watson Analytic is just convenient uh, business analytic tool. Um, to start with uh, the data 610 to build. Uh, it's actually, uh, Watson Analytic is business tool which very seamlessly uh, built from input like natural language processing. He, uh, Watson Analytic is capable to be predictive modeling even without, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to program anything. That's why Watson Analytic is for the beginning of the program. You don't have to write any script anything. You just as a data analyst work in what is very graphical interface. But you don't go in deep in the analysis. You end up with what Watson Analytics give you. I just try to, to explain you what is Watson Analytics. So at this point in the program, Watson Analytics as a tool is good, but it's not something which uh, you cannot finish the master degree program. It's very good if you find the time and at least understand what it is. It's very good. I will encourage everyone which 
um, wasn't exposed to do that. Oh, here is a question about the competition again, uh, was not clear. Okay, uh, in addition to what is the course, we have something in addition which is named Kegel competition. The way you can participate in this competition, the instruction will be posted in the classroom. And if you want to, de to do this, this is in addition to the coursework, but we are going to monitor this one of the TL Inish is going to monitor and help you, whatever help you need. It's very nice to participate. This is um, many universities, all top universities actually participate in the Kegel competition. It's very good. You test yourself there. Okay? So, in order to give you some, let's say, encouragement to participate, we will be giving to all successful participants 3% on top of the 100 point. You will get 3 points extra. Okay? So, if, you gra if your final grade is somewhere in the 87, you can end up with 90 this, this way. But you have to make sure that... Uh, so, how the competition is going to work, the instruction will be posted in the classroom tomorrow, okay? Okay. Oh, someone, um, okay, let me qu clarify that you are better prepared because uh, you learned how to program in R. In R, R is mandatory skill for any data analyst. So let's put it this way. This is, ma R is mandatory, but you might, might need more in your belt. So it depends what type of job you are going to do. For instance, let me tell you why Watson Analytics is, use, is very useful tool for a data analyst. For instance, you have uh, your manager is giving you data and he's asking you very general question. You don't have, you work in the analytical team, but you don't have exactly task to you. He's saying, oh, Mike, uh, or whoever, uh, look what you can take, uh, what you can obtain from this data to help us to compete better with the competition. Let's say this is the task he's giving you. Nothing specific. So the the best way as a data analytic, having all the tool, the way I presented the data, the big data analytic approach that data analyst has access in the cloud to all the tools, and you pick up the most uh, adequate for the task, in this case, the most adequate is data uh, is Watson Analytics. Why? Because this is going to be just the beginning. Without start writing any code, anything specific, you pour this, uh, you upload this data to Watson Analytics, and Watson Analytics is going to give you some insight. And by without you writing any code, nothing, you are going to get some insight. Let's say very business inside, very general. Now, based on this, as a data analyst, as knowing other tools, you can explore this more in deep, doing some machine learning, predictive analytics, using other tools. So, using Watson Analytics as a primary tool to get initial insight and then go more in deep with the other tool and method you use it in the program. Because in Watson Analytics, let's say, is some de decision tree in the back, but you are even not aware what is in, in the back front of uh, Watson Analytics. You just, as a, 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 as a business analyst, upload your data, and mostly you can play a lot, you can customize, you can obtain different things. It's very interesting too, 
but you don't have to write any code. So that's why as an initial tool is very nice to start with. You save a lot of, t of time, you get some initial insight, and then you say to your boss, look, I'm going to go this way, and I think I can go this way and obtain something like this, you know. And you start, as a data analyst, put uh, more specific uh, tasks to yourself, discuss with your manager, and go doing, uh, let's say, analytic with R or with Spark. It depends on the type of data you, you are having. Did I answer your question? Yes, you answer my questions. I just have a little bit difficult to visualize on the real world, like uh, how to use those expensive tools in a company. You know, uh, if you think about, oh, we start with the Watson Analytics, and then you have another tool like SAS, or you have another tool like uh, Sparks. You know, um, I know this is a, the it's the dreamy the dream goal, but I have difficulty to visualize that in real world and try to make the case for the manager to invest in more tools. You don't have to make uh, look what is going to happen. It depends. Of, we are preparing you. Let me go to the scheme I like. Um, your concern is the price of the tool. I understand. Well, uh, it depends on the company, of the size of the company. But the solution, if you are going to work in the big data approach, the company, uh, not all the company uh, have big data, let's put it this way. Okay? But we don't have a program which will work for small company and for big. Now, most of the tool as a services in the cloud are not expensive, let's put it this way. And if you think about Watson Analytic, if you have to, the individual account is not so expensive, it's $30 a month. I don't think this is expensive too. Okay. Uh, do you understand me? Yes. And streaming any of the services in Bluemix, of course, it depends of the company, and you have to make a calculation. It depends what you want to achieve. First, let me put the following. Uh, finishing this program, you will have on your belt open source software, and you will have proprietary software. That is what the industry wants. They don't want that you know only R, which is open source and free, because you are not going to be able to do big data with this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, you know? You will be able to do a lot of analytical tool, uh, analytical tasks with R, yes, open source free. But if you want to do really to exploit the power of big data, and let me tell you, all these tools for big data, now we are more moving in the direction of what is data democratization. And everything is going uh, less expensive, no more expensive. Let's put it this way. So, you think, I, I understand your concern, and I'm glad you actually posed this question. I, I, um, I didn't want to spend time explaining this, but coming from you is excellent. So, the thing is not that it's expensive. Think about, you will think, ah, Hadoop is open source Hadoop and free. Jewish. What? I don't know what you said. Okay, let's talk about Hadoop open source and free. What what do you mean open source and free? If your company will be using Hadoop, is gonna have investment either in the server of the company, which is very expensive, or having a um, or contracting a service in the cloud. So uh, someone has to manage this Hadoop. Even uh, um, Apache Hadoop is open source free product, but in order to be used in, in, in um, let's say, in a company, you have additional, uh, additional uh, expenses. This Hadoop has to be deployed in a server or 
someone has to manage. So all the company like Databrick and um, Cloudera and other um, big data company, they are making money on something which is free open source product, which is Apache Hadoop. Why? Because they, Apache Hadoop is just the vanilla Apache Hadoop, which in order for you in the company to work, someone has to deploy uh, the, uh, the uh, to deploy the product in the infrastructure to uh, and to manage this, and you need a team to manage this. So these companies are going to manage the whole ecosystem for you because it's not just the Hadoop ecosystem map produce. You will need more product. So most of them are free, but someone will have to manage them. So all these companies are living of providing this service. And now when this service is available in the cloud, if this service is provide, uh, available in the cloud, is much cheaper. So this is not going to be a problem if the company is going to take on this. And if you as a data analyst, data scientist, are prepared in all this direction, and you know what we are talking about, I'm sure this can be analyzed and it depends. Maybe you're, uh, the company doesn't need to deal with, um, with big data and Spark and doesn't need to contract these services. I don't know if I made the point clear. So there is not such a thing as free and cheap and obtaining, um, let's say, a uh, result from uh, big data. It's not possible. So company who has to deal with this will have to spend some resources. Uh, resources uh, to access Spark Hadoop for big data or resources to access. And, and let me tell you, this, uh, even if they go to the cloud, it's going to be much uh, uh, less expensive than doing uh, deployment in the company server. Any other comment related with this? I will appreciate. This is very important thing. I know many of you have this concern that, oh, why we are going to study this expensive software if my company cannot uh, uh, cannot afford to uh, have any of them? Well, maybe they cannot today, but they can have tomorrow. And we have to be open for everything available. And we are trying to prepare you with the skill which actually the industry requires. And if you go to the position description, where to the open position, go to LinkedIn to all the, uh, the position description, uh, uh, you will see that everyone is looking for at least three, four, and some big data tools are must in order to get the job. Did I answer your question well? Yes, you did. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And you we know. Uh, yes. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. You know, I I was thinking about it because my my department alone is mm -hmm. spent four hundred fifty thousand dollars to invest in new server for Data Vault. And then for what? For Data, for data Vault. Data Vault. Oh, okay. And then when I was talking to them about Hadoop and all, they say, oh, we're not going there yet. And I say, well, but uh, Hadoop is free. And then they go, yeah, but the hardware that we needed to run Hadoop is going to be expensive. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not prepared for this conversation yet. <laughs> well, Hadoop, again, that, and they are right. Hadoop is free, but uh, is free, but you still need the infrastructure. Yeah, the software is free; you can download, but you need a team of uh, prepared people to manage this, to set up your Hadoop server, or you just uh, uh, you just uh, rent the service of of um, 
Hadoop on on any of the cloud. So they are these two options. Uh, of course, Hadoop service is more expensive than Watson Analytics and all this stuff. This is different, let's say, different kind of animal. Even though it runs in a commodity computer, but since we are talking about hundreds of nodes, you understand that just the 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 cluster uh, the number of the cluster you need according to the size of the data you're going to run uh it might be not very expensive but it might end up expensive now there is no so uh, i don't understand very well why they are saying uh that uh the hadoop is going to be expensive for them actually hadoop doesn't make sense if you don't have big data hadoop is expensive if you do not have big data because Hadoop is designed to run for big data otherwise is very expensive do you understand me so Hadoop ends up cheap for the big data because otherwise if you have to run this big data it's going to be much if you have to run this on Oracle it's going to be hundreds of times more expensive do you understand me? Yes. So Hadoop only makes sense if you have big data. And actually, you are not going to run them on Oracle because it's just unaffordable for anyone, not for your company. Not affordable. That's why Hadoop was invented. And all this NoSQL because it's not scalable for, for big data. Okay? Thank you. Uh, Okay, we are going to continue to talk about this in the class. I see something. I saw another question here. Small business level. Would you recommend obtaining leverage? Uh, Jerry is asking about small company. It depends what the company is going to do. It's not just the size of the company. It's the data and what they want to do with the data. Sometimes, if they have big data, it doesn't matter that they are small company, it's less expensive to um, contract the service. If not with Bluemix, it can be with uh, Azure. Azure, uh, the Microsoft, they also have uh, Hadoop. So it doesn't have to be Bluemix, but all of them is mostly the same. Um, the price is... Um, well, you know, it's very negotiable, but it's the same. Now, uh, I cannot recommend just without knowing, what, not because of the size of the company, what they need to do. It depends on the data and what they need to do with the data. And if they really need to do something with big data, they will have to find the money to do with this. Otherwise, they just have to live without the big data. Do you understand me what I mean, Jerry? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I saw some other question. Okay. 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 Uh, that's a very interesting question, and I do understand your concern. And we should be able in this class. Don't hesitate. All this concern, if they are not related with the weekly topic. We have other topics in Cyber Cafe, which are interesting topics. Don't hesitate to post them there and and openly discuss. And, and let me tell you, part of the, the class, we have people already uh, working uh, for company. They can give their experience too. It's not just uh, what I'm going to tell you, what I'm receiving with my experience, with interacting with the industry, because uh, all the time as a program chair, because I'm not only professor in this course, I'm also the program chair for the Master of Science in Data Analytics. I'm actually running the whole curricular date and working with the advisory board. And we are trying to stay as closer as possible to industry so our graduates are better prepared for their career. That is from our part. And my suggestion to you is to get full benefits, try to dedicate as much as possible time. So 
uh, let me uh, uh, also clarify the following. The thing that you are going to be trained, uh, that you are going to use the services in Bluemix, that doesn't mean that you have to go in a company work in Bluemix. After you, uh, you learn to do this in one cloud environment, just go to the other is not a big deal. Do you understand me? This is just like the user interface change. If your company is not going to work with uh, Bluemix but with AWS, well, uh, if they have a similar data analytic tool, the point is that AWS is very good in cloud, but they don't have ample, at least at this point, they are behind in what is analytic just because it's not their profile. AWS has different profile, you understand? Um, actually, Azure is very good with the data analytic top. If we are going to work as a data analyst and data scientist, and you have to recommend to your employer where in the cloud go for the data analytical tool, I would say the top one is the Bluemix IBM and the Azure Microsoft. Because AWS is very good in cloud, but they don't have analytical tool, good analytical tool there. Do you understand me? So uh, we have to think about in what realm, what does have to be um, solved and what to recommend uh, in the position you are. Someone was asking if Watson Analytics is in is in Bluemix. It's not in Bluemix. Uh, you don't need well, you can obtain free Watson Analytics, that's not a problem. Or uh, the way we are working in Data 610, our students are enrolled in our department account because if you do your personal account, you are going to get the, the limited one free. You can get it for 30 days free, and then you will have to pay. Now, if you contact me, and you are interested to work, we are going to enroll you for free in the departmental account, which Elena is managing out, actually. She's the one who is enrolling everyone. And you will have access to all the data uh, which we are using in Data 610. So this is um, a full benefit. Whoever is interested in Watson Analytics because it didn't work, just contact me and uh, contact actually Elena and copy me and you will get access to the Watson Analytics. Watson Analytics is not in Bluemix. What is in Bluemix is Watson Cognitive, which is totally different. Watson Analytics is business analytic tool. Watson Cognitive is artificial intelligence tool, which in uh, the, let's say, the first way, uh, the first time, uh, IBM presented Watson Cognitive, which was in the Jeopardy game, uh, winning the game with the three top player in Jeopardy. That is Watson. It's Cognitive Artificial Intelligence tool. Let me share. So, and Watson Analytic is just business analytic tool, totally different. Let me share if you, if someone has question. Okay, here is what we will have in the Watson. This is Watson uh, Cognitive. What we are going to do are this um, natural language, pro based on natural language processing, uh, services like visual recognition, tone analyzer, which is, uh, all these are very powerful tools, which we will be exploring. And if you want to go more in deep, you will have, of course, uh, this goes beyond this course, uh, you will have to do some programming um, uh, either in Python or in Java in order to build something on top of what is already provided by IBM. We will be exploring these um, services, cognitive application, week three, four, five as a class. And this is Watson Cognitive. 
Watson Analytic is totally different. I don't know if uh, I cannot open more um, browser right now because of the problem I have in my computer. But Yelena, can you share Watson Analytic for a second so they see the difference? Yeah, sure. And also another thing is if some of you already have a Watson Analytics account under my subscription, you're still active. So if you do that and if you feel like you're unable to log in and if I see in the system, I'm going to give you the password reset instructions. Just let me know, okay? So let me see. I'm going to go ahead and share. I think I had it open already because uh, this is what happened. One of you just contacted me. Yes. Okay, so let me go ahead and share. Okay, share my screen. Uh oh. What okay, yeah, there we go. So here are your three Ds, right? You have data, you have discover and display, right? So as you may remember, you import the data, then you do the, you do some explorations, you build the predictive models, and display is basically when you just present your finding. You can do a nice uh, storybook, or you can do something like a dashboard, but this is one of the storybooks that I created. And by the way, speaking of the storybooks, the free edition does not have this functionality. This is only available for professional editions. So that's basically what it is. I can click here, and here are my top findings. So secretly, behind the scenes, each of this is a dashboard, right? So I can just go in, and then end user, and I can keep on browsing through what's presented in here. Or ultimately, I can also post my own questions and keep on adding to this. So basically, the way it works is you just, it just, you just don't need to do any much of the programming. See, this, this is a data, right? So what I can do here, I can click on any of the data sets, right? Like, for instance, this is one of the data that I collected from Twitter. I can just click here, and it's going to give me a set of questions, anything that I might be interested in. See this? For instance, here, I can explore the number of people by country, right? So that's Twitter, the, the tweet also rather, right? Or I can go and do some analysis on the followers, and so on. So basically, I did not write any single line of code, and I can just click here and get, and get a nice map. Right? Did I write any lines of code? No, I did not. Right? I could further click here and I can drill down. So basically, without writing any code, when I import the new data, the tool is trying to analyze the relationships between the variables for me, and based on that, it can decide what I want, right? So I can go up and I can go down. Well, in this case, uh, it does not let me because I don't have it set up. But in general, when I do the demo in a data 610 class, I create a hierarchy. So we can uh, drill down. United States, we can drill down by state and by city. So, and here I have a set of my related discoveries. So I can just click and I can keep going. So this is a program that can keep that can keep me awake all night long. I get so excited, and just keep on going, and no single line of code. Yeah. Okay, so. uh, that is good, Ellen, because yes. uh, most of the people already have taken this, yes. so we we should not spend more yes. time on this. Yes. And exactly. whoever is interested, just send email, and they will be invited, and they will have the opportunity to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start. Any other, other? I don't see more question. No more question. People is already tired, so we are moving. So I look forward for excellent discussion for the first week. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you a good question about the Bloomix account. No, so, no, 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 not okay, now. Okay, later, later. I'll, I'll email you. I know what is. Not now. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, guys, I thank you. I think that was a helpful uh, session today. And this is just, you are aware, we are opening the door. And we are going to explore some of this enormous topic, which is analysis of big data, whatever is possible in four different directions. Okay? Looking forward for uh, um, enthusiastic discussion so we can understand better what we are doing. Don't feel alone just reading and doing the assignment in order to get full benefits and read the classroom, I wanted to show something here. And I find out that some of you are actually not reading everything which is in the classroom and even the minimum. Oh, okay, I got it. Um, here is the classroom. What I mean, when you go to content, uh, some of you are going only to the discussion. In the content, the content is full of resources. Look, right now, you have resources on SQL if you need to reshape, because we are going to use all this, uh, all previous skill you have on Python, R, and SQL. We will be using them based on what you already have in this skill. If you are not very good, you have refreshment material here. And you have the first the first week. Make sure you read all required reading and of course the recommended in order to get full uh, benefits of the class. So this is not just going to the discussion. Go to the content and read everything and then go to the discussion and see what is going on in the classroom, okay? Now we have the discussion for week one and two, and we have the introduction. You, here is one thing which I wanted to point, very important. Elena posted today something which is how to ask um, effective question. It's very important in order for you to receive um, the response to your question, what you are looking, follow the guidance because you are asking questions, but if you don't provide what actually you are doing and what you are obtaining without this uh, guidance, uh, actually neither me, neither the TA, we don't know what you are asking actually. You have to provide uh, what is going on and actually the questions supported with screenshot are going to get you the, the answer right away. Otherwise, it starts, oh, okay, what uh, code you use it for this? What was the output? And then uh, this will be 10 steps until we get to the point. That is very important. So keep this in mind. Every time you are going to ask question about software, it's going to be very helpful. Okay. And uh, I know some of you are already leaving. Uh, we actually, we finish it. If you want to leave, it's fine. If you want to stay and ask most questions, uh, we will stay a little bit more. Okay, I will be stopped.